What's going on everybody? Lily and Perry here, finally back with another episode and it's overdue because unfortunately installing the HRP front splitter on my store WF1 was a difficult task for me. I just kept screwing up the job, but we got it on there. It looks fantastic. And we're gonna go over how I made that happen in this video. So check it out. But before I get too carried away explaining the trials and tribulations I went through in order to get the front splitter on this car, please, if you're interested in following along, subscribe. And if you end up enjoying the video at the end of it, please hit the like button. Now that I've got that out of the way, on with the show. Now, I'm gonna first start off by getting a level working surface. For me, the level working surface is gonna be made up of four scale pads, two for the frame and two for the front splitter. They're all gonna be working off of the flat plane and I'm gonna use shim stock to make sure that everything gets to the right height. It's an easier way to make quick adjustments. One of the other thing that's important is to make sure that the pads make the correct contact. So that's one of the things you see me doing right here. I was checking to make sure that the splitter landed prior to making sure that it was level. So it's right about at this point that I realized I made a parry error. Right in here, this is the bolt that locates the actual side pod that attaches basically the rest of the bodywork to the actual frame of the car. So I realized at this point, I needed to have that bolt in the side pod that was attached to the floor, which located the fender here and also located the center section, the fenders and the tail. So I basically had to reinstall all of the bodywork. So obviously you got to cut the zip ties I was using to temporarily hold the center section, get the center section and fenders out of there, the front diffuser and my handy dandy level that was helping me make sure I didn't have a weird yaw to my diffuser. Now we got to get it back in the air, get the titanium sheet underneath it, as well as the center section for the floor. Now I'm not going to put the tail end of my floor on, just the outer tunnel pieces. The rear tail is just going to get in the way of me making sure that I'm on the scale pads correctly and they don't really add thickness to it. And I know some of you are thinking, well, there is some thickness to it, but we're actually going to be referencing the bulkhead behind my head, not the very back of the frame where the spar is. There's a taper kind of that goes up on that back box tubing that goes at an upward angle. So it's not a flat piece of geometry. So we also had to whip up the stay cables, at least for the front. The rear ones we have to wait because we need to make new parts to make sure that we can clear the tunnel at the bulkhead. But the front ones are a pretty straightforward job, so we were able to get those in and make sure that the floor is flat across the plane. Now here you can see I've got my old front splitter on the car and I'm happy with how that fits. I also did some checking as far as the length from my measuring point at the back of the car and wrote that number down. But you can also see the white plastic I was using and I just tried to raise my splitter and it didn't work. So now we're back down to the original measurement from the original store diffuser and gonna see how that fits. So one of the biggest battles I had was this. This lip right here is the back of this diffuser and this is the bottom of my car. Now, if I had the splitter at the height that was told to go for, I would have had to cut out a massive channel to allow this whole front diffuser to be higher. I decided not to do that. And there's a few reasons why. So the main reason Let's not cut carbon fiber if we don't have to, especially brand new carbon fiber. Beyond that, ironically, without cutting it and running it in the most upward position I could, I ended up putting the new HRP front diffuser at the same height at the bottom as my original store WF1 diffuser. And that helped me out because the top surface here happened to be identically the same as well. So these two heights are the same whether I run the store WF1 or the new HRP front splitter. Of course, I had to clearance a little bit additional for the nose cone, but besides that, it's the exact same height. So one of the things I noticed right here was the fact that the nose of my store didn't really want to slip down over the front of the diffuser. So clearly we had some trimming to do 
and it thankfully was relatively easy. It was just the lower edge that hides down underneath the front of my nose cone. With stuff like this, a finger sander goes a long way with a giant fan near you to make sure that you're not breathing in the carbon dust. And I did this three or four times at the minimum to make sure I didn't take away too much material in the process. So my toughest battle about this whole process was keeping the front end of the diffuser perpendicular to the frame. This is something you're just gonna struggle with, and especially when you're drilling the holes to locate the front diffuser, start with small ones and slowly get bigger. So obviously back to some paint on a Q-tip because inside these bores, there are threads. So I couldn't just drill straight through from the outside and even still, I'd be shooting blind. So putting some paint on the inside allows me to make sure that I properly located at least to my best estimate of where the hole is. And we're gonna start off by drilling with a very small hole and then we're gonna open it up slowly to get to the final diameter. Hopefully not needing to slot, but of course I absolutely had to slot two of my holes. So I can't tell you how many times I wanted to punch myself in the face with this process. It seemed like no matter what I did, I ended up with more than a quarter of an inch out of perpendicular with the front edge of the diffuser to the frame. Finally, somehow by a stroke of luck, I ended up getting the holes just right and now it's less than a sixteenth from left to right. I don't know how I got that lucky and honestly, I swear to God I won't be able to repeat it. But fortunately, the diffuser is located beautifully right now, perpendicular as it can be, and at the only right height I could achieve. So this right here is what we'll call my fender catch. And I'm using some countersunks that I haven't really countersunked in because I need to get buttons. But this is basically here to catch the front edge of my fenders on both sides. What that'll do is make sure that the fender and the whole nose and everything doesn't want to just lift off the car. Now, we've got three screws and we've got some washers underneath, so we've got this little gap that will allow the carbon fiber just to slide in underneath it. And most of the time people just put nuts on the bottom, but I like using what we'll call nut certs or nut rivets. These work out really well for jobs like this. So to make these, you just have to trace the bottom profile of the fender onto a piece of aluminum. Now, one of the things to notice is I've left plenty of room on the outside for me to be able to pull the fender inwards because there's the quarter turn fastener plate that I haven't put in yet. And the other thing you probably might not have noticed is I actually made a reference line to where the piece is left to right. So now I'm lining up that reference point, and from there I get to mark my three holes. Now, I love using the automatic center punch. I'm gonna follow that up with an eighth inch drill bit, and then step on up to the point three drill that I needed to make sure that the nut certs can fit down into the hole. Now, nut certs work just like any other kind of rivet, but to pull them, you actually thread a fastener into them. They're whole kits, you can order them online. Most of the nut certs I actually get are off Amazon and they seem to work pretty brilliantly. So that's about it for this video. We still have a few things I need to do, but the big thing is the front diffuser is properly located. <laughs> the aluminum little edges for the fenders are there. We're gonna have to do a location on these Zeus fasteners for the fenders in a little while, but I wanna make sure that everything fits as far as the wheel, tire, suspension package goes before I tie that in. And honestly, I put all the stuff on the car just so I can get a good look at her. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in watching more of these videos, better stuff to come, please subscribe. And if you just like this video, please hit the like button. For now, gonna go home pet my dog, get some sleep. Have a great night.